After the Seventh Battle of Rusan, the Sith were reorganized under Darth Bane's rule of two, abandoning galactic conquest in favor of a long-term grand plan. Bane and his successors lived in hiding, slowly preparing for the fruition of their ultimate goal, the destruction of the Jedi Order. Not all Baneite Sith Lords had the same take on the Sith Grand Plan, however. While Darth Sidious, the Dark Lord of the Sith who got to execute Bane's plan, chose to carry out a genocide of the Jedi, some of Sidious's predecessors preferred a more subtle approach. One of them, Darth Tenebris, didn't want to wipe out the Jedi at all. Instead, he planned to make them obsolete. In this video, we'll be telling his story. Attention, Sergeant on deck! Sometime around 247 BBY, a Bith named Rujes Gnome was born. Gnome, like many Bith, was a natural genius skilled in a wide variety of scientific fields. Unbeknownst to everyone around him, however, he also had a strong connection to the Force. Most Bith Force sensitives were given to the Jedi to train, but for some reason, Gnome was not. Instead, he was found by the reigning Dark Lord of the Sith, a Twi'lek who took Gnome as an apprentice. Rujes Gnome became Darth Tenebris, trained in the ways of the Sith, and began working toward the fruition of the Sith Grand Plan. Tenebrus and his master were powerful enough that eventually the Jedi Council was able to sense their presence in the galaxy, perceiving it as a darkness that was slowly warping the shape of the Force. This darkness signaled that the Sith Grand Plan was almost at fruition. Tenebrus's master had a very specific vision for how the Jedi were to be eradicated. He worked to create a virus that would sever a Jedi's connection to the Force, which would render the Order unable to stop the return of the Sith. However, this project was a failure. Despite years of work, Tenebrus and his master just couldn't make it work, and Tenebrus ultimately chose to take the plan in a different direction. He killed his master and claimed the title of Dark Lord sometime after 167 BBY. Like many Dark Lords before him, Tenebrus's first order of business after killing his master was to find an apprentice. Traditionally, the Sith just kind of wandered the galaxy and chose the first promising Force sensitive they encountered, letting the dark side of the Force guide them to their apprentices. Tenebrus, however, took a different approach. He found a pair of Muns living on Mygito, took blood tests from them, and determined that they could produce a child incredibly strong in the Force. Tenebrus paid them to hook up and have a kid, and when the resultant child was five years old, Tenebrus took custody of him. The child, born Hego Damask, became Darth Plagueis. Darth Plagueis proved to be very strong in the Force, and when he came of age, he became very wealthy too. Plagueis' father, Car Damask, was the chairman of the intergalactic banking clan, and when he died, Plagueis gained control over his late father's wealth and business connections. Part of his inheritance was the moon of Sojourn, the remote location of a fortress-like estate that became Plagueis and Tenebrus' base of operations. Plagueis' wealth and connections were added to a vast pool of resources the Sith had been gathering since Darth Bane. From his master, Tenebrus had inherited a vast network of agents, a whole lot of credits, and access to the highest circles of galactic politics. Tenebrus had also done pretty well for himself in his public life. As Rujes Gnome, Tenebrus had become a master shipwright, building some of the most well-crafted starships in the galaxy. Tenebrus only sold his ships to the galaxy's elites, earning him easy influence over virtually any powerful being in the galaxy. He used his proceeds from shipbuilding to fund many other business ventures, some meant to generate even more revenue and connections, and others to serve his vision of the Sith Grand Plan. Tenebrus's version of the Grand Plan was far removed from any other known Sith Lords. Tenebrus and Plagueis were rationalists in their approach to the Force. In a sense, they were almost atheistic, seeing the Force as an exotic sort of energy driven by biological processes, not as anything mystical or sentient. To them, the study of the dark side was just another kind of science that allowed them to achieve incredible power. As a result, unlike most other Sith and unlike the Jedi, Tenebrus and Plagueis devoted much of their time to the study of midichlorians, which they saw as the source of the Force instead of its transmitters. Based on this unusual view of the Force, 
Tenebrous's version of the Sith Grand Plan was grounded primarily in conventional science. From his master, he had inherited the view that the Jedi didn't necessarily need to be slain, rather, the Sith could win by destroying the Jedi Order's place in the galaxy. But while Tenebrous's master aimed to achieve this by cutting the Jedi off from the Force, Tenebrous plotted to make the Jedi obsolete. His goal was to advance technology as much as possible, to design supercomputers and future predicting algorithms that could perfectly distribute the galaxy's resource, eliminating scarcity and the everyday troubles of sentient beings. In a galaxy where everyone was protected and provided for, Tenebrous believed, the Jedi Order would become redundant and die out, allowing the Sith to reign unopposed. To achieve his vision of the future, Tenebrous sought to meld technology and the dark side. Tenebrous, whose powers of precognition were even stronger than Yoda's, saw foresight as the primary purpose of the Force. Even the best computer models could be wrong, but if he created computers that, through the Force, could see the future clearly, then he'd have the building blocks of a perfectly planned economy. Unfortunately for Darth Tenebrous, his apprentice didn't share all of his views on the Force and the Sith Grand Plan. Tenebrous believed that the success of the plan was predetermined and inevitable. It could be predicted by the Sith, he argued, but they could do nothing to make it happen prematurely. Plagueis took a different approach. He didn't trust Tenebrous's visions, and unlike his master, he believed Sith victory could only be assured if the Jedi were completely wiped out. Sensing the growing alienation of his apprentice, Tenebrous secretly broke the rule of two near the end of his life. He took a second, secret apprentice, a fellow Bith whom he named Darth Venomous, who Plagueis later speculated to be a child of Tenebrous. Venomous was kept a closely guarded secret by Tenebrous, who saw his fellow Bith as a sort of backup plan. Tenebrous didn't live long enough to use that backup, however. In 67 BBY, during a mission gone awry on Baldemnik, Darth Plagueis took the opportunity to crush his master under a rock slide, killing him and usurping the title of Dark Lord. Plagueis then took the Sith Grand Plan in a different direction, taking Darth Sidious as his apprentice. But this wasn't the end of Darth Tenebrous. Tenebrous had a vision of his death before the trip to Baldemnik, and to prepare, he had infected some of his own midichlorians with a retrovirus, mutating them into a form he could control. When Tenebrous died, his midichlorians remained alive and, through the air, migrated into Plagueis' body. Thus, Tenebrous managed to live on, if only barely, a fragment of his consciousness enduring within his former apprentice. Soon after becoming Dark Lord, Plagueis encountered Darth Venomous, who he handily defeated. Venomous became Plagueis' lab rat. As he and Sidious developed methods of controlling midichlorians, Plagueis tested them on Venomous, killing and reviving the would-be Sith Lord dozens of times. All the while, that fragment of Tenebrous's consciousness bided its time. Tenebrous was waiting for the prophesied arrival of the Chosen One, which he could sense was near. When he got the opportunity, Tenebrous planned to transfer his essence to the Chosen One, stealing their body and cheating death in the process. But Darth Plagueis died too soon for Tenebrous's plan to come into fruition, murdered by his own apprentice. After Plagueis' death, Tenebrous's spirit was cut off from the Force due to the nature of his mutated midichlorians, but it was also unable to truly die. Darth Tenebrous was forced to relive his own death again and again, waiting for his midichlorians to finally perish and wishing that he still had a mouth with which to scream. So that was the rather unpleasant fates of Darth Tenebrous, a relatively peaceful Sith Lord. But what do you think? Have you read Darth Plagueis, the novel that Tenebrous comes from? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.